Um, bang. We are recording. Uh, happy 2024. And thank you so much for coming to my first virtual uh, goal setting, free challenge, objective uh, extravaganza. And um, this is the first day of five trainings that we're going to do for our uh, our fat furnace for real challenge. And I, I put this together because I wanted to figure out or uh, highlight and kind of eliminate the most common pitfalls that people have when it comes to tackling their health and fitness, not just for the new year, but for, for any program or any day of the week. And um, I, I, I think that the, this is the, probably the most important item on the list because, well, that's why I started with it because most of the time when, when people are confused and fall down, it's because they lack clarity on what they're trying to accomplish they're conf they're confused and conflating different goals that they have and trying to hodgepodge them all into one thing or as is a, as a common pitfall they're taking on too much at once and they're unable to focus their energy and when you have clarity and focus you have power when you have power you have results and you're able to create change so um the the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give you some powerful definitions for the objective, the strategy, and the tactics that that you're going to define today, or you have already defined, hopefully. But I'm going to give you a little bit more, a little bit deeper on some, some basics that you already know. And then I'm going to give you some examples on how to choose your strategy and your tactics to make your success inevitable. So let's get right into it. And uh, I'm going to give you a metaphor that um, will hopefully make the the objective process and this this entire mission process a lot more clear. But um, when when we're in the when I, when I was in the army, so if you don't know, I'm a veteran. Uh, when I was in the army, I could kind of tell when when we were in the strategy room in the operations center and people were were laying out their concept of operations. I could kind of tell that something, nothing was going to happen based on the way that they structured their mission. And they either had an unclear objective or an unclear strategy or both. And the objective for the purposes of our mission is uh, an outcome, a health outcome that is in alignment with the version of yourself that you can be insanely proud of. So, the outcome, the health outcome that will make you insanely proud of yourself and is in alignment with who you want to be. So that's that's what our objective should be. And the strategy is a method of achieving your objective that makes success inevitable, that leverages your strengths, your resourcefulness, and, the con and takes into consideration the constraints that you have right now in your life. So your strategy shouldn't be with an imaginary life or imaginary resources that you don't have or imaginary time that you're going to make up, but what's going on right now, how you can use what you have to make your success inevitable. I use that word inevitable a lot because we're not leaving it up to chance. So uh, that's the definition of objective. That's the definition of strategy. And the tactics are the actions taken that execute the strategy. And the effectiveness of the action will depend on your skill level, the consistency and frequency with which you take the action, and the relative value of that action compared to the last. And relative value just means your first 30 minutes of strength training are infinitely more valuable than uh, the... <laughs> your first hour of strength training is really valuable if you haven't been doing any, but your 10th hour of strength training is not going to be as valuable as um, as that first hour because you're it you relative to what you're doing before it's a smaller increase. So tactics are the action, strategy is the method of achieving the objective, and the objective is the outcome that is in alignment with the version of yourself that you're going to be the most proud of. So those are our, those are our definitions for for success, and. In your goal setting worksheet, you have three categories of goals, three categories of objectives, sorry. 
you have a form or a aesthetics or an appearance objective. You have uh, a function or a performance, or this is sort of what your body does. And then you have a medical, um, a healthcare or a, uh, an internal objective or uh, biometrics by bi uh, a cat in the category of biometrics. These are objectives that are related to your, the amount of, or your risk for disease or your uh, quality of life. Uh, these are things that you usually can't see, but you can measure with a blood pressure cuff or, or a, a laboratory reading or, you know, some blood work or things like that. So we've got three categories for our objectives. And hopefully you have one for each or a multiple for each. And they should feed each other. And they, they relate to each other. But they all have different, um, different. Each objective has a different strategy that you'll use to achieve it. And I'm going to give some examples here. And I'll run through strategies for each area of the triangle, and give you some examples on how you would achieve that. And then um, I'll open it up for some questions. But uh, on the on the form side of the the triangle, there's um, you know, your these are the these are the goals that are related to how you look, how much you weigh, how you're going to appear in the mirror, uh, and what the scale says. So this is the output of your body, or this is what your what your body appears as. And our strategy to influence that has to have has to involve your diet or a nutrition plan in some way. And there's a spectrum of of strategies, you can't see, I don't have a whiteboard, but imagine a left to right spectrum. On one side of the spectrum, you're controlling calories in, calories out. And on the other side of the spectrum, the opposite side, you're managing your energy. What's called the energy flux. So that's how much energy you're inputting, how much energy you're spending. One, counting calories and managing calories in against calories. That's the uh, energy balance method. So that's really simple. You put the brakes on the amount of food you're eating. You try to eat at it. You keep your energy intake to a deficit at what your energy output is. On the other side, you're in, you're trying to increase the amount of energy you're putting out and increase the amount of energy you're taking in and the hopes of increasing cellular turnover or um, building muscle, burning fat, and really increasing the speed at which your, your body processes things or your metabolic rate. So each of these things, each of these ends of the spectrum are going to be influenced by what you eat and what you do. So your nutrition plan is going to have to fall somewhere in that, in that, on that spectrum. So the that's the form end of the triangle. And I'm going to move to the top of our triangle or the function end of the, of the triangle, what your body does. This is how you feel in your body. This is how strong you are. This is how much energy and focus and presence you have. So the, the goals on this, uh, on this end of the spectrum or on end of the triangle, well, I'm, I'm saying spectrum and triangle a lot. So I know I'm going to mix those up more. So get ready for that. But the goals on the function end of the triangle are the, the most fun for me. I get the most excited about it because I like to have a lot of energy. Um, I like to do a lot of things. I really care about the amount of focused attention and presence that I have. And I think this is what makes life really fun. And this is also sort of where pain falls into place, where, you know, what can I do without pain? So to influence the outcomes on that end of the triangle, you have to have a movement, a movement process. So on one end of the, you know, again, to use a spectrum for a, like a, a nice little visual on one end of the spectrum, if you're trying to imp improve your function, improve your air, uh, your quality of energy, improve, improve your stamina, you have less movement on the far end of the spectrum. You have more movement. Ooh, I was getting a thumbs up. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm not going to get distracted by the AI on this thing. So you have um, um, 
a less movement to more movement. So if you're trying to rehab an injury, you're going to have to move in specific ways. You're going to have to have a certain amount of a certain frequency of um, exercises. So I have a shoulder injury. So if I'm trying to improve the function of my shoulder, then I'm going to have to use it every day and work on the mechanics of that. And the more functional goals you have, so the more goals you have relative to how you perform, the more movement that you're going to require, that's going to be required. So if you have goals around your endurance, you're going to have to do cardiovascular training. If you have goals around strength, you're going to have to lift weights. The more the more goals or the more of uh, the the more you are trying to increase your performance, the more specific the movements need to be. So if you just want to feel good, I mean, there isn't really there's very few exercises that are more valuable than a daily 30 minute walk. And that's really general. That improves your stamina. That improves your focus. That improves your cardiovascular performance. Just doing that. So that's a very simple uh, movement on the, you know, in the, as far as the spectrum is conserved, I would put that on the, the end of less movement. But the more goals you have, the more you have to climb and the more specific of interventions you have to put uh, into your fitness routine to improve that performance. And then on the third leg or, or leg, on the third third point of the triangle, the uh, the goals or the, the category... Um, I, I labeled it as in your goal setting sheet is the medical goal or the, the health outcome goals. These are things like blood pressure. These are things like um, uh, A1C. These are things like, you know, testosterone and cortisol. And um, these are these are things that are more difficult to measure, but certainly can be felt and uh, but are difficult to directly control. And to influence that end of the triangle, you have to have um a combination of food or nutritional strategies movement strategies and a lot of rest and recovery strategies so it, that part of the triangle is is really about balance and it's about making the rest as important as the work so you have three distinct sets of objectives three sets of strategies that will work and they they work they influence each other and they help each other out and they support each other but it's important that you identify the strategy that you are going to utilize to accomplish your objective and uh once you have the strategy outlined it's really easy to figure out the actions that you're going to take so i'm going to give a general example of somebody who's trying to lose weight Somebody who's trying to, uh, so they want to they want to see their aesthetics change. They want to see the the scale weight drop. They want to see the waistline shrink. They also want more energy, more focus. They also want to alleviate maybe some knee pain or back pain, and they want to lower their blood pressure. So this is these are very common objectives that people uh, talk about when they join a gym or start a fitness program. So what I would do is on each of these categories, let's say I'm going to, I'm going to go to the calorie control end of the, uh, of the form. I'm going to do, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm just going to throw out some, some fake numbers here. So it's for me. So I, I'm, I weigh, uh, 200 pounds. I'd like to lose five pounds. So I'm going to make it really simple. I'm going to eat at a slight calorie deficit. So that's my strategy here. Um, for my uh, fitness goals, so I want to build some muscle and I want to ease my back pain. I'm going to lift weights twice a week for 30 minutes. And I'm going to go for a walk three times a week for 30 minutes. So I've got my movement plan. I've got my food plan. And then for the third leg of my triangle, for my blood pressure, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I'm mineralizing my water with a little bit of Celtic sea salt. So that's effectively an additional nutrition strategy. And I'm going to monitor my blood pressure. So that's my 
That's my holistic, very simple strategy for tackling those three goals. And they work together, right? Like the, the better I eat, the better I mineralize myself and recover, the easier it's going to be to build muscle. And the more consistent I am with lifting and exercise, the lower my blood pressure will get, you know, through as, as a byproduct of my exercise program. So it's a virtuous cycle where everything works together. And I have clarity on the strategy. So how I'm going to achieve the results. And I've made the action steps really measurable, really, and really simple. And also fairly small because we have 168 hours in the in the week. And I've only committed to four hours of exercise over the course of five days in a week. So um, what I have now is I have my strategies identified. Great question, Tanya. I'll get to that in a second. I'm going to take the action steps. I'm going to write them out. Daily walk. Weights. And mineralization, calorie deficit. Bang. Now I have a checklist. So every day it's a yes or a no as to whether or not I took the correct action. And it's a yes or no to whether or not I'm on plan. And if there's any vagaries right now in the objective setting phase, if I'm not sure if what I'm going to do is going to impact what I'm, what my health outcome goal is, then the answer is probably no. And um, if if I ever say, if I'm ever saying to myself maybe or this could, the real the reality is is the answer is no. Or maybe the the action I'm taking is a little bit too complicated. So one of my actions was eating a calorie deficit. Now we're gonna go over tomorrow how to create a meal plan to make sure that that's the case. But um, for now, I'll say that, you know, do I need clarity around what that means? So it's, I need to get it down to where it's either a yes or a no. And one of the chat. <laughs> Great question. Good question, Kayla. Um, okay, so we'll, um, well, okay, so great. Both of you have questions on uh, tactics, and um, we'll we'll get into them. So, so to answer Tanya's question first, um, you mineralize water in a couple of ways. There's really a really easy way, or I guess a really simple way. Um, you can take a, a pinch of unrefined Himalayan sea salt or Celtic sea salt, and just sprinkle it into your water into a 20 ounce water bottle, you won't taste it, but there's 92 secondary minerals in salt when they pull it out of the earth. And those secondary minerals and the sodium help balance out your blood pressure really, really well. And uh, if you wanna be even faster and easier, you can just buy a designer mineral supplement like Element. That's really popular right now and tastes really salty and good. Um, and and those those are really simple, fast ways to mineralize the water that you're drinking. It's also a good reminder of how much you're drinking, water you're drinking during the day. Because I, I know that if I haven't used any of my mineral supplements, I know that I haven't had any a full bottle of water. So I'll take that as a cue to drink some water. Heck yeah. So, um, Kayla asks, uh, would you recommend cutting out alcohol, <laughs> cutting out all alcohol? I have a lot of friends doing sober in January. Great. That's really great. Uh, that's a, first of all, um, I love sober January. Um, I love it because it gets people paying attention to what they're doing. Uh, I also think that you have to decide for yourself what you're going to do. I mean, I'm in a fitness professional, so I'm never going to argue for alcohol. I think that um, I would experiment with it. The people that I I hear talk about it, Sober January, or what's isn't there a Sober October? Isn't that another one? Yeah, people love it. 
Um, so, I mean, I would try it and see if it improves your quality of life, if it improves your productivity and energy. Um, I've, I've gotten long stretches of time without drinking and it seems to have positive effects. So yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Try it, try it. And you tell me whether or not, whether or not it's valuable, valuable for you. You're welcome. Okay. So the, the purpose of this goal sheet and this goal setting process and this challenge is to just create massive clarity around what your objectives are, what your strategy for accomplishing those objectives are, and um, what your uh, what actions you have to take to arrive there. And you try, oh. And is that, that Tanya, there's an app called Dry App? Yeah, it's called Try Dry, and I use it every day. Um, it started as a dry January thing, but it um, is great because you can say you stayed dry or you drank like you planned to drink, like maybe you were doing something with friends or whatever, or you did not drink as you planned to, but drank too much. And so it's kind of cool because it's very visual. And um, personally, I did have like, you know, 90 days of um, completely dry and it was really awesome, actually helped a lot. And I'm back to it now that the holidays are over. I gave myself time for the holidays to celebrate with friends, but yeah. I love it. Uh, well, that's really cool. I'm, I'm, I really like um, how technology is helping us visualize uh, things like that, visualize um, your actions. I'm a big fan of the whoop strap and um, the, the data outputs that they have. So I love visualization. I'm a, I'm a nerd. I guess I'm a visual person too. Well, exciting. Um, very cool. Okay. Um, so the, the big objective objective was to get clarity here. So is there anybody um, on the call right now who doesn't have a clear objective or at least understand what their most important priority is? Good. So we've got some clear objectives. We have. Do we, does, it, does anybody need clarity on a strategy on how, uh, what strategy they're using or what strategy makes the most sense for them? Okay, excellent. And then the action steps. And uh, I'm gonna help out. I'm just gonna give some great examples uh, tomorrow and the next day about workout programs and uh, meal plans and how to make them really simple. But the, the it, right now, if you, if you know that you've got a strategy and you've got your actions distilled down into bite-sized portions that are small enough to, to say yes to yourself every day, and you're pretty, you're a nine out of 10 confident that you're going to say yes to yourself, um, meaning that they're really easy to knock out and, and you have a high level of skill with them, then, then you, you're already winning because you're going to burn less time in confusion. You're going to ask, you're also not intimidated by the process. And I think that's a big one is making sure that the, 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 the plan isn't, isn't intimidating to you. And it's something that you feel confident in executing so that, um, when you're stressed and when life is trying to compress your time and energy, but you still feel confident that you can execute on it to a high level of certainty and proficiency. But awesome. Um, tomorrow, we're going to go over how to create a outcome-based meal plan and the difference between uh, a meal plan for objective A and a, and a meal plan for objective B and uh, how to compose that in a way that makes you feel good and also how to keep variety in your diet so you don't hate your life and feel like you're eating boiled chicken, chicken breast and uh, grilled broccoli for, for dinner every night. But uh, I'll also have example meal plans that you can download and I'll answer any food questions that you want. But your your goal for today is um, take an action on all of your on, on all of your objectives and your today's day zero, today's day one of the new year. So by the end of today, you'll have 
forward momentum on all of your goals just by saying yes to yourself and executing on the plan that you have. And um, I'll put this uh, replay up and I'll send you send you a link. And then uh, we'll have a, a meeting at two o'clock tomorrow to go over food and all that fun stuff. And if you have any questions or anything comes to mind, uh, hit me up. And I'm excited. I'm looking forward to your success and the best year that you've had in health and beyond. Thank you, Josh. <laughs> You're welcome. Bye. Bye, guys. Thank you.